Hello and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. Hello to those of you watching live on Twitch. And if you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to join us for this show every Thursday at 5 p.m. EST for the live show. That'd be EDT now? Because of the clocks or is it ST? Either way, five. <laughs> Today we are playing Once Upon a Time, which is our Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition viewer game. So before we get started, let's go around our cast and crew, figure out who we are and what we are playing tonight. So, we will uh, start with our lovely guest this week. We have Eldritch Warlock. Hi, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good actually. Pretty late in the evening for me, so hopefully this will be a fun game to wake me up. Uh, and who are you playing today? Yes, I shall be playing uh, the Tabaxi Toolboots, a former cat burglar, pun fully intended, turned uh, police officer, even though he was never actually caught or given reason to leave his old life behind. Nice. And we have with us our regular cast and crew. First up, we have NPC Bree. How are you doing today, Bree? I'm doing great! So excited to see what shenanigans. Um, before the game started, uh, Susanna did make a very pleasant comment along the lines of, hmm, never used one of these before. So uh, prepare for the onslaught of terror that's probably going to ensue tonight. Um, but I'm playing Malene, the tiefling warlock who is in the slow, arduous process to learn how to read with her eight-legged friends. We love... Mer uh, Merlene. God, my brain is just bleh. Um, next up, we have the wonderful Cleric of Cod. How are you doing today, Kat? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Excited to have some shenanigans. Oh, yes. Yes. Due diligence has uh, done his due diligence and is ready to go. Fully repaired and operational after the last round of adventures. Mm. <laughs> but the gnomes, the gnomes were saved, and that's the what counts. Gnomes. The gnomes are no safe. No gnomes were harmed. No gnomes were harmed in the adventure. No harms were uh, no harms were gnomed. What with the oh, it's going to be a good game tonight, folks. And uh, joining us in just a little bit, we will have Madame Gandalf, who plays the wonderful Sutty, our halfling druid, uh, inhabitor of due diligence and. Sleeper under of desks in the TPD. Um, but yes, hi, I'm Susie. I'll be your DM uh, this evening. The exits are here, here, and here. Um, oh, God. Anyway, so before we get this show on the road, I'll remind you folks that we are sponsored by Fantasy Ground. So all of the wonderful and incredibly good roles, which no doubt will happen tonight, you'll see we'll be using Fantasy Grounds to do so, uh, which you can try for free at fantasygrounds.com. You can also get all of your miniatures from Wayland Games. Go to waylandgames.co.uk and get yourself a huge range of D&D, Warhammer, and 40k minis for 20% off. And check out our sponsor, Tabletop Loot, who sell incredible dice. When we hit 20 retweets, we will give away a set of dice to someone there in chat right here today. So get your butts into chat and get retweeting the tweet so we can give you a set of dice if you retweet this tweet. Bam. You can also support... Uh, nope. Yeah, support the show by retweeting that tweet. Yeah, finally, I'll remind you how you can interact with today's game. You can donate to affect our game by giving players natural ones, natural 20s, or give me them, uh, wild magic surges, and you could also donate to give folks a pet with the uh, table of pets right there in the chat. So, uh, if there is also a moment that you like during this show, you think it's particularly funny, particularly dramatic, it tugs at the old heartstrings, please do clip it, because we put these into our highlight reels and we share them on Twitter and everybody has a good time. Um, usually it's Madame Gandalf pulling a face or um, a dirty joke or something or like something. that. Or licking something. Who knows, maybe your clip will be turned into a gif. But if you do, please do um, tag us in it and let us know that you have made these clips so we can see them and share them and have a laugh along with you too. So, without much further ado, I'll hand over to myself and we'll get this show on the road. <clears throat> Last week, 
The captain came back from being out to pasture. He was incredibly relaxed. He was so relaxed, in fact, that the crew found that incredibly suspicious and thought that perhaps they needed to get a Hawaiian shirt ready as maybe the captain had something drastically wrong with him and was not long for this world. However, he did, in his sort of, whatever you want to do, chill, peace, relax, ask them to do a welfare check on a local prince um, who lived on the outskirts of Thailandia who had not been heard from in quite a few weeks. Um, although, you know, it was a, yeah, go there, don't go there, don't mind, just do what you want. The captain was incredibly relaxed. Nevertheless, after some discussion about uh, <laughs> whether or not... Way. <laughs> she walks out of due diligence looking hungover. <laughs> it was a rough night for the Suki family. No. Oh. Oh. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> He's just staying on. Uh, uh, Suti, uh, in the in the file cabinet, under S, oh, right. is a wee drop of the hair of the dog. Have I told you lately how much I love you? No, I love you too. <laughs> so, while Suti partakes in hair of the dog, um, uh, where were we with the summary? Uh, yes, so there was discussion of Chirpy Cheep Cheep, uh, the local bard, performing open heart surgery on the captain in his office. Thankfully, that did not happen. Um, but nonetheless, we had the uh, the gang headed out to um, the far reaches of Thailandia to find out what happened to uh, Prince Edward, I believe is what we call them. He arrived at a town called Trident and uh, had a couple of drinks in the tavern and whereupon you met Jacob, who was a sort of local hunter, local man about town who flirted with everything that walked, that also said that his betrothed Bella had disappeared um, and gone without a trace. Um, you went to Bella's home and spoke to her father, Charlie, who um, said you could set her room, no problem. Uh, wherein you found a bundle of extremely flowery, explicit Lord Byron ass love letters um, from Edward to Bella. You headed up to the castle, and that is where you discovered that the house's servants had been turned into things. Uh, you met a, uh, a servant called Louis, who was a candelabra. And after some back and forth, um, uh -huh, very typical Frenchness between Louis and Renard, you went up to the library whereupon you found that Prince Edward had been transformed into a horrific beast and was chained up in front of the fireplace as Bella was sat there reading a book. Um, a fight ensued and Bella was defeated and Prince Edward was restored to his human self and the case was closed. Um, you did advise Edward to stop sending saucy letters to people, though, because this probably would happen again if he didn't. And he kind of was like, eh, maybe. So, this week, we return once more to the stable. Things have quieted down again. It's another slow week. Uh, there has been... Nothing coming in the office, really. Nothing beyond what local constables could do. Nothing requiring your, for lack of a better word, talents. Special skills. Yes. Unique set of skills. Unique skills. <laughs> So, uh, you find with yourselves once again, Sutin, Melina, and Du. Finbar is nowhere to be seen. Uh, as, has, as he's just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth, he had a date with Mallory Efficent, and neither of them have been seen since. It is rumored that they have sailed off somewhere on Mallory's, is Mallory's yacht, but nothing concrete as of yet about where they've gone. Um, you did get a sort of 
photograph from Finbar, but it was kind of blurry, blurry, and you're very glad that it was blurry because it was kind of like a, it was lewd, shall oh. we say? And he wrote on the back, "Don't wish you were here." Um, Rule number sixteen. <laughs> No unwanted intimate <laughs> pictures. <laughs> it's such a it's so far down on the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's so far down. <laughs> it's because rule two is don't kink shame, so we have to respect that that might be a very strange kink. But we won't shame him for it, but he's <laughs> But it's not it's not legal, but we can't shame him about it. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, we have uh, two boots uh, in the stable with you at this point. So do, if you would do us the honors and keep two boots up to date with everything that changed since he was last in the TPD. There have been quite a few updates. The uh, printer seems to go on forever. The booklet is quite thick when it is handed to you. <clears throat> Rule number one, the captain must always have his coffee. Rule number two, no kink shaming. Rule number three, always have a warrant. Rule number four, Finbar is always right. Rule number five, don't talk about the, you know this way. I thank you for skirting around that. It is a traumatic incident. I have no wish to be reminded. <clears throat> we respect that. Thank you. Rule number six, all staff will be buried in a Hawaiian shirt. Rule number seven, bloom before boom. Rule number eight, don't touch the ooze. It never ends well. Especially Rule number nine, and your fur ooze is definitely of the not good variety. Oh, yeah. We have degreaser. We get the tar out, don't worry. We also have petroleum jelly for the hairballs. That somehow ended up being a required piece of equipment now in our kits. I don't know why. Uh, rule number nine, when in doubt, burn it out. Rule number 10, a finbar move is to always lube. Rule number 11, go for the eyes, boo. Rule number 12, only another ginger may call a ginger, ginger. Very important. Rule number three. Very important. Yes, very, yes. No clopping in the stables. <laughs> Although the captain, I, do we enforce that? No, we don't make, we don't enforce that one with the captain. Once what he does when his door is shut and the blinds are down, we uh, rule number fourteen. Yes, that's the do not use print of that rule. <laughs> yes, the captain is exempt. <laughs> rule number four: Do not use Constable Bob for target practice. Unfortunately, that has come up. Uh, rule number fifteen: uh, No eating of other detectives. Unfortunately, this was also something that has come up. And annotated rule number 16, uh, no unwanted intimate photographs. That is a lot more than when I was last here. I think there were only four last time, but I shall endeavor to follow them all. That is and why you, you have a book. Yes, and thank you, though, for handing that to me. Much appreciated. You are quite welcome. Uh, by the way, just as a matter of uh, curiosity, you haven't heard any uh, updates, have you, on the investigation into the theft of the the uh, the portrait uh, third star on the left, the one uh, that was uh, attributed to the uh, Cheshire Cat thief? Uh, just out of no. uh, personal curiosity, I assure you, not personal. No, 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 we haven't heard. I, uh, although I believe um, that one is now being attributed to uh, Prince Charming, given his long-standing disappearance. I see. It is thought that he actually committed that crime, uh, and it's why it's unsolved now is because he's disappeared. Oh, and the penalty for breaking rules is you will be fed to the front desk. 
Is Charming one I saw on my way in? Yes. Understood. Thank you. And I'm sure that wherever the Cheshire is, he is most vexed that his abilities are being attributed to someone else. But that's uh, uh, an assumption. <clears throat> I, I, I think the only thing that has been seen of him of late is his grin. And even that has begun to fade from memory. I've heard it is a nice grin. Thank you. I mean, uh, You're welcome. I've heard it is a nice grin. <laughs> Hmm. Ignore me. Ignore me. I'll just go read the rules. <laughs> so as Two Boots slinks away with the rule book and kind of like, uh oh, reads the, the, the rules very guiltily in a corner, uh, Captain Colt arrives. He has a coffee cup, not notably not from the Muffin Man's, as since the revelation that the Muffin Man chain was using real life gingerbread people to make gingerbread men biscuits the captain has boycotted them um and he is very been very open about boycotting the muffin men and he has instituted a no muffin man policy in the stables so he comes in with a just a, like a plain coffee cup this time is good morning If no one else say, say it, I will. Good morning, sir. Oh, uh, yes, Captain. My book. Good morning, and offer him the coffee. He takes it, so now he has two coffees. And he um, he notice, noticeably looks so completely opposite as he was last week. He is now not super relaxed. He looks tired. He looks kind of drained. Um, and he's like double fisting these cups of coffee as he makes his way to his office. He says, all quiet. Anything to report? Uh, uh, it's been quiet, I quiet, I think. There are pictures for you on your desk. What kind of pictures? Vacation. Finbar pictures. Don't worry, we changed the rules after these, but... We can't change what's already here. Very well. Very well. Also, and he, uh, we respect your office privacy. It is impolite to clock. Yes, it is, Maylene. It is. And he yawns um, very, like, openly and just heads his way to his desk. And he, you just see him sort of sit down and he picks up one of the Finbar pictures and he just <sighs> sighs deeply as he puts it in the trash. Oh, tell me, um, have have you? This is going to sound absolutely crazy, but have you heard heard that tune that's on the radio at the minute? It's so catchy, I can't get it out of my head. Uh, sing it for us, Captain. Sing it for us, Captain. Adjusting the dials and um, pick up a radio station mm -hmm. and start playing whatever. Because I'm assuming it's on every radio station. It's on every radio station. And it sounds a lot like Despacito, but the D&D &D version of Despacito. So it's all on like I mean, lutes and one. flutes and shit. Yeah. And he's just like, yes, that that song. I can't get it out of my head. Why do are you doing this to me? I I thought you wanted to hear the song. That's why no, you asked for it. I never I never want to hear it again. Honestly, I would die a happy centaur if right here, right now, I never heard that song again. Would you like us to deafen you? No. Then how do you intend to not hear? It's it. Not. D don't don't worry about. It. Just the paperwork you could be doing. Yeah. Sorry. No, there's no paperwork I can be doing, Captain. But I yes, can sit Marlene. with you. 
can spend time today. You know, we never spend any time with each other anymore. At all. Maybe I should just sit with you and shadow you today. Maybe we should just spend a lot of time talking about our lives. Do you know that we have <laughs> <laughs> level? About deafening, no. <laughs> Oh, dude's already left. <laughs> He's got a mixtape in. Molly just gets like really close and kind of sits down and goes, Yeah, no, it's always been weird being raised by a bunch of demon loving parents, but. And then she just begins to prattle off about just like a random life, about being trapped in a tower for seven years and finally using a bread knife to release herself. And she's just going on and 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 on. Very quickly, though, so it's almost like a six hour conversation has been put into like a 15 minute one, and she's just like, Yeah, mm -hmm. and then this one time it was just really awful, and I just can't believe it. And that's when Horus really came into my life when I really started understanding how to like summon these like creatures. And me and Horus became really good friends, so it was really nice because I finally had a feed and someone to talk to. It was really important to me, and you know, now it's really nice to have a TVD because now I have a lot of people to talk to. It's been really great. I'm super grateful that I did. And then she just stops and, and goes, What about you, Captain? And as you look up, you see the Captain is face down on the desk asleep he'd been trying to do some paperwork while you were talking and he'd give you like that mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. yes mm-hmm sure I mean, you know interesting sounds but at some point he just he just went he is just asleep and as you Tell as you what? like kind of <laughs> yes i agree it's most interesting uh, do go on when he falls asleep, Malene's gonna start pulling out his papers to see what he was doing, and she, she's just gonna, like, pull him out. She's gonna hand him to Sidi and goes, What was the captain doing that was so boring? He seems to have fallen asleep doing his paperwork. Must have been really boring stuff. Uh, that's paperwork. It's, that's always boring, right? As the, but we'll go like a cinematic angle from here. So as Sooty tosses the bun, like the little scrambled up paper over her, over her shoulder, as it falls to the ground, it comes up to the camera and you can see that it says personnel reviews. <laughs> Excellent. And a little um, vacuum hose comes along and goes, sucks it up. Puts it back on the dude's desk. <laughs> um, so there is, there's like a good 30 minutes of just nice, peaceful quiet in the office. You're just playing cards, you're doing your paperwork, you, uh, Gretchen and Horace are like doing the uh, five finger fillet on the desk with a little knife. <laughs> around uh, get Gretchen's tentacles and Horace's legs. Um, so it's pretty quiet. You hear the scratching of quills and the little <laughs> of a knife in a desk on Finbar's desk. Um, of course. Before Watch you Evan. hear quietly from outside um, what can only be uh, described as very faint Despacito that it's getting quietly loud well slowly louder from you know, outside the, the first time i heard that song it was okay the second time not so good this is the third time and i am already sick of it i must admit is anyone else having that same feeling was it just me uh, dugo's dugo's running out of the or scooting out of the office as quickly as he can to find out where the song is coming from so that he can silence them Okay, so as you get up to move, do uh, you notice that the captain's head has sprung straight up from the desk. His eyes are sort of wide, but they look unfocused. And he sort of woozily gets to his feet and starts, well, his hooves, and starts moving forward. But he's kind of not, it doesn't look like he's consciously doing it. He is unconsciously moving forward. Uh, Tubus is going to work, walk up to the captain and start snapping his fingers in front of the captain's face. So you snap your fingers in front of his face, you sort of wave your hand in front of his eyes, and you get no reaction. How are Do your rope skills? For his tail? Rope skills? Uh, 
depends on what circumstance you're asking, but if you mean in restraining someone in the middle of a situation like this, not so good. Huh. Sorry. In other circumstances... Somebody who can throw a lasso. Dude will try just... to throw a lasso over the captain. Maybe oh, we should boy. just ride the captain and see where he goes. So, Maylene, are you jumping on the captain's back? Please. I wouldn't do this if it wasn't dire circumstances, but if he's not going to listen to reason, we have to make sure he stays safe. Okay. <laughs> She's going to hoist herself on the captain's back. Okay, roll me a dexterity check. So just a straight dex roll um, to see if you can jump on top of the captain's back who is currently moving. Thirteen. Thirteen, okay. So it's a little bit trickier than getting on a horse. Um, because, well, there's no saddle, so there's no stirrups for you to put your foot in, and he is moving, but you, you manage to sort of, like, hold on to his uniform jacket and swing yourself up onto his back, so you're kind of riding him like a horse, but kind of clutching onto his waist, like you're on the back of a motorbike. <laughs> and while she's, while she's on it, she's like, Horace, Gretchen, come on, we've got adventuring to do, put the knives down, or bring them with, who knows? <laughs> So uh, Gretchen tucks it into a little knife hole because it's, it's a tiny, tiny octopus knife. And she just sheaves it, gets a cigarette out, lights that, and then she <laughs> horror skulls up back on top of your head. God, my army, my army of children <laughs> while I ride the captain. <laughs> this is going to be a new rule by the end of the night. Rule 17, no riding the captain. Uh, so two boots yeah, is I going think so. to go uh, this new hat of his which he came in this morning which is quite large with a large yellow feather which no looks nothing like the hat that cat that puss in boots wears nothing mm -hmm, at all mm -hmm. no put that on similar to but legally dissimilar from yes Le it's a trico not a uh, i can't think of the script for puss in boots hat but oh uh, grabs his rapier and we'll just march alongside the captain mm -hmm. such Marine. Okay, so, uh, do are you going to try and lasso the captain, or are we going with Maylene just riding him? Oh, he's going to try to lasso the captain. Okay, so roll me a... Sleight of hand. Let's try that. <laughs> All right. Oh, God, I can't believe we're doing this to the captain. Ten. Okay, so you uh, you might you might just like fun like functionally make a lasso, but it's not a great one. And you throw it, it kind of just slaps him in the face. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. But there is no reaction. He doesn't put a hand up to stop it. His arms are just limp by the by his sides as he's sort of trotting forward, and this rope just <laughs> right on the end of his nose. Uh, then as he goes by, Dew will reach out and grab a hold of his tail and uh, set down the wheels so that he can follow along. Okay. And just let the captain pull him along. We're all riding the captain. We're all riding the captain. <laughs> oh, and I, I open up, the, the hatch opens up for Sunny to hop in. Okay, so... So Two Boots is just I walking alongside. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Sati. Like, are we trying to stop the captain, or are we just trying to like go We're with just the captain? Just Efforts, the to captain. Efforts to stop oh. the captain have failed. Therefore, we are escorting him to ensure that he is not an a danger to himself or others. Because I mean, I cut difficult to rein it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she'll just panic and jump inside of you. Okay, so <laughs> the scene we have in front That sounds of more interesting. <laughs> Before you've even left the stable, um, Maylene has hopped up onto the back of the captain, who is a centaur. Um, Dew has grabbed his tail and has got the wheels in motion. Sooty's climbed inside Dew, and Tubert is like, I'm walking alongside this, not involving myself in it currently okay well, it's, more like, it's more like he thought that if he jumped up on the captain as well it would be a bit too heavy so 
Otherwise, he would be joining Mylene on the captain's back. But he's being cautious. Doesn't want gotcha. to break the captain's back. Okay, so as you begin to pass through the headquarters of the TPD, um, you see that every single officer and personnel of the TPD are acting in the same manner as the captain. And they're all making their way out of the front entrance. You pass people um, from all all walks, all races, uh, all levels in the TPD, from like Secretaries to even Chief Dragonov. You see her in the hallway in her impeccably tailored black suit, um, still wearing a very stern expression, but her eyes are just vacant as she uh, makes her way out of the front of the uh, of the of the building, and it's quite a disturbing thing to see this whole flock of people just moving as one, all mindless. Didn't this happen before? Everybody went to sleep. Everybody went to sleep. Do you ever think about how we're the only capable members of the TPD? We get shit done, what can we say? Yeah, I mean, we, we must be the smartest ones here if we're never affected. Do is trying to figure out what's wrong with us that we're not affected because it's, he's very tired of being left out. Oh, it's because we're so smart. So there has to be, there has to be something wrong with, with us to be left out like this all the time. Nah, we're just great. Well, the argument we're is either we're the most competent or we're the least competent and just whoever's doing this is overlooking us because of that. But I think I agree with Maylene, really. We are the most competent, obviously. Or we wouldn't yes, be able to save all our friends. Yes. We are special. Very special. And as you make your way out of the front doors of the TPD now into like the sort of... Um, if it was a house, it would be a front garden, but like for like a police, like it's where all the carriages and stuff are stored. And you can see out in the uh, in the street, there is a um, a black carriage pulled by two white horses, and stood atop the carriage with a boombox in both hands raised above his head, is the uncreamed, unscaly. Now not special agent, charming. And this boombox is playing D and D Spasito. That was good. Fireball. D and D Spasito. <laughs> Alexa, <You're> gonna... <laughs> play Despacito. Here's a sample of Destiny. No, no, Alexa, no, stop. No, no, no. Stop. <laughs> 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 how, how, how do you get this shit? I'm just going to put it in the top. You're right. <laughs> 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 I just Somewhere I could hear hit, uh, Will's heart stop for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Not copyright. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, so, we are fireballing uh, Special Agent Charming. Okay. As you uh, reach out to... Oh, you're muted, uh, Kat. I'm actually fireballing the carriage. He just happens to be on top of it. Right, you're going to fireball the carriage. Okay, so, you raise up both middle fingers in defiance. Your somatic component, as you say the words for your fireball... And wait, how does how does your fireball um, actually get cast from you? I can't remember because you've got like um, the little cannon for the for the, the for the missile, device. right? Yeah. And then there's the the trebuchet arm. Mm -hmm. And then um, for fireball, it's just the um, the fingertip drops down and pops a light, <laughs> and uh, just a line of fire. Uh until it okay yeah. will be okay so you raise up the fingers the somatic component taken care of the fingertip falls down the bead flies out towards the carriage and where it's due to make an impact it is snuffed out 
Okay, uh, Tubus is drawing a dagger and throwing it at Charming, muttering under his breath as he does so. Dare to take credit for my work, will you? Um, okay. Well, all this so... is happening, Molly's going, Hi, Charming! It's been a while! <laughs> <laughs> um, so roll your attack for that, and as as he's on the on top of the thing with his boombox, see him go, Oh, hi, Melene, how's Finchley, or Finkel, whatever his name is? Um, he's naked on a boat. Oh. Yeah, Typical Finchley. That's a 16, okay, uh, so you throw the dagger, um, trying to hit Charming, and it whiffs past him. <laughs> what are you nice try, suckers. Two boots just lets out a string of profanity. Just <laughs> enough to make a sailor blush. No. Just an annoyance. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got places to be, police officers to charm. I'll see you later. <laughs> and the carriage starts to pull away. And as it does, the music continues, and you see. Uh, everybody start to follow it. Oh, what would you like to do? Can I... Can I try and, like, ride the captain faster to chase after him? Um... Um... Like, can I, like, can I, like, kick my legs and go, like... Roll me oh. animal handling? <laughs> Hold on. I'm just I'm just emotionally preparing myself for the things I'm I'm literally choosing to do right now. Okay. Open up fantasy grounds. Why aren't you hold on fantasy ground? Hold on, fantasy grounds kick me out. Uh oh. Okay, so is there anything else uh, anybody would like to do while uh Maylene is trying to spur the captain on to make him go faster. Uh, Tubus is actually going to run after the carriage and see if he can't jump onto the back of it. Trying to keep hidden from Charming's sight as he does so, if possible. Uh, the carriage was pretty far away from you when he started speaking at you. Um, okay. So I don't think you will be able to get there before it's, it's off, unfortunately. How, how uh, far away is it? Um... It would have been like, oh god, distances. Why? Um, you were behind like a sea of police officers, so at least sixty feet away from this carriage. If it's worth anything, with female agility, as long as we mm -hmm. were stood still, sixty feet is my speed. Okay, it started pulling away. Uh, you could try for it. Uh, it would be incredibly difficult to do. Uh. I might as well make an attempt. What's the worst yeah, case? Right. I, can I get trampled. I get run over by a crowd. Uh, what role would that be? Uh, so let's make this a... Probably acrobatics, right? You're going to be trying to like duck and, your way, uh, duck and weave your way through the people. Try and mm -hmm. use your speed and agility. So let's go acrobatics. Okay. And that is a natural one. Natural one. So unfortunately, um, you know, you try and duck and weave through all these people, but they are also moving at the same time. So you spot an opening, and it's very quickly closed by another body that comes in the way, and it just cuts you off, and you don't, you can't get there in time before you start taking off. Uh, yeah, Bree. Yeah, go for it. Can I magic missile the uh, the music box, the boom box? You can try. Uh, it is worth noting that your spell sort of um, sort of disappeared as if it had been like magically countered somehow. Okay. Do I get the sense? Okay. So let me ask this: Do I get the sense that a counter spell was a uh, spell was used, or that it was more of an anti magic field? It or Yeah, it was like an anti magic field around him at that point. Okay. And around oh, the right. carriage. So, yeah. Then, then I won't do that. Then he wouldn't do that. Susie. Um, yes. So whilst I'm in the process of restoring the fantasy grounds from not working, the D20 modern dice roller gave me an eight. Uh, I have a 19. 
I have a 19 to keep the captain <laughs> behind here. Um, okay. I roll 19 to ride the captain fast. Why was the fast and hard? <laughs> Bring! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> it's apparently such a good idea at first! <laughs> you seem like a good idea at the time. <laughs> it's getting worse from here. Okay, so... <laughs> in, a, in a very hi-ho, silver away moment, uh, Merlene digs her heels into the captain's ribs, and he the rears up... Heels. With the red high heels. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, <laughs> with the, uh, she digs the heels into his ribs, which kind of makes him rear up almost with his front legs sort of doing the horsey thing before he, <laughs> he notif noticeably speeds up. Um, you do have to, <laughs> so really you have to grab his arms and stare him like his arms are raised. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what's happening right now. Do are you still oh. holding on to the captain's tail? Okay, I would like you to make me a um Oh god. Uh <laughs> make me a dexterity check to see if you can hold on to the captain's tail as he lurches away. Okay, fuck. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh, that's a six. A six. Okay. So you weren't expecting this lunge, um, this this sudden burst of speed from the captain. Um, and you kind of, as this happens, you get a weird sort of perspective on this. <laughs> as Millie grabs his arms and uses them as reins to tug around the people. And he is rapidly leaving your grasp. Uh, his tail is out of your hand right now. Is there anything you'd like to do? Um, having marched in my fair share of parades behind the equestrian units, um, I'd like to dodge any piles that are left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to uh, dash to keep up. Okay, so you're dashing to keep up with the captain, and mm -hmm. uh, Sati, you are inside Do uh, Things are getting a bit shaky as there's a sudden burst of speed. Um, it's a bit rocky in there. <laughs> the vending machine's making weird noises. <laughs> you just like something like, Oh, a free soda! <laughs> <laughs> Christ alive. <laughs> oh, God. oh God, Tim, it's, what are you doing? Uh, sorry. sorry, one moment. Try to speak without laughing. Uh, mm. So how, how close together are the buildings in this area? Um, if you want to do some like cool parkour action, we can make that happen. Oh wanna... yeah, definitely. I'm a cat. Yeah. What am I gonna do? Sweet. All right. So, um, roll me some acrobatics then. See how well you do at these the sick parkour moves. Yep, uh, acrobatics. Let's hope I don't get another natural one. Oh, okay. nearly. Jeez. Nearly. Uh, that's <laughs> top. Okay, so you can't quite do some real cool flips and shit, but you are managing to keep pace with the um, with the uh, with the captain with do um, just by running by not being amongst the people. You can move faster up on the rooftops. Um, you can uh, you can see the carriage, at, which is going pretty fast at this point, um, but you can see it making its way through town. And as it makes its way from your vantage point, you, you can see more and more people, um, officers of the TPD, because apparently we're full of them for the purposes of this story, in their bright blue uniforms. Um, you can see them beginning to join these 
throngs and where the carriage passes, there might be a person that just stops and just turns to follow, in se- you know, seemingly entranced by mm-hmm. this happening. Is there anything you'd like to do? From my perspective, can I get an idea mm-hmm. as to a general area that Charming might be heading towards? Or is it more, I'm just having to follow along at this point? Um, roll me an intelligence check. Uh, yeah, not my best. Or even survival, if that's better. Yeah, that's a tiny bit better. Plus one for ten. Ten, okay. Um... You don't know if he has a specific route in mind, um, but you can tell that uh, he's clearly been around a lot of the city by this point. He seems to be heading towards uh, an area of town which is under quite a lot of construction. Uh, You're heading into Old Town, where you know they are currently reworking all the sewers. Uh, is there any way that I can shout this down to you and uh, Merlene? Am I close enough for them to hear me? Yeah, I reckon you could. Well, you've all got those little, like, like phones. Fantasy phones. Okay, so you could be like... in, that, in that case, I'll make sure to pass that on to uh, Merlene, uh, you and, Sut- and uh, Sooty. Yeah, Merlene, on your... Uh, your little bluetooth headset which you probably have you get a call in city do you all get these calls in that it appears the charming is headed for old town do you think you can steer the captain around of course <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so are you going to try and head him off? Oh, what are we doing? Oh, uh, I'm going to... Sooty, have you done any herding? Herding? Or herding? Because yes. I mean, I've done both. Uh, herding uh, the livestock. My whole family grew up on a farm. We're a big family of farmers. My cousin, my second cousin, my brothers and sisters, seven of each. Uh, my mom, my dad, my aunt, my uncle, my great-grandma, my great-great-grandma, my great-great-great-grandfather. A whole family of herders. Oh. We're herding horse. <laughs> not, 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 not that we herd ho- horse. I mean, like, that we're horse for herding. You're not in time to say. I, uh, um, of course, I always understand what you're trying to say. Uh, could we herd the captain in another direction? I got this. I got this. And Sooty is just going to, uh... Oh, fuck, what does she have? <laughs> <laughs> Whip out a cowboy hat. And yes, it is silver and sparkly. <laughs> I forgot that I had sunglasses on, but this is still perfect. <laughs> Save a Let's horse, do- ride a captain. All right. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, she's gonna use, like, her vine whip as kind of, not as, like, an actual, uh, whip, but to kind of use it like a lasso. (laughs) Ride! (laughs) Like a rhinestone cowboy, Sutty appears out of dew with a hat with a whip. (laughs) Okay, so how, (laughs) how the fuck? Okay, um... So how we will resolve this then is, uh, Bree, you are still steering the captain, but you are being incredibly helped by Sooty. So I will give you advantage on your animal handling check to um, direct the captain as you will. 
Um, okay. I still haven't gotten Fantasy Grounds to open, so I'm just gonna use Dice Roller. Uh, the first one was a two. <coughs> oh no. The second one was a 14. Plus one, 15. Okay, 15. Um, with the help of Sutty, you managed to... <laughs> 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 Hello, new <laughs> You managed to steer the captain. Um, so you are no longer moving with the main herd of people. You're moving through um, uh, side streets and back alleys to make your way to Old Town. And you can see now that as you get there, uh, Charming's carriage is just entering a very large sort of sewage, uh, uh, a sewer sort of intake, like a very, very large sort of tunnel. And um, Charming is no longer on top of the carriage. The boombox is, and it's still playing the song very loudly. Can we um, see Charming? No, you cannot see him. Guess I'm going to hop off the captain, I guess, right? If it's on top of the boombox, got to go get the boombox, guys. Yes. And I look at the cat. Oh, you mean for me to go? Oh, of course. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Fetch. That song was getting him. Wait. No. Laser no, pointer. And I, laser po I put a laser, uh, <laughs> the red dot laser pointer on the boom box. There's a few moments where two boots goes, that is not going to work. And his eyes just blow up and he's charging towards <laughs> that boom box. <laughs> He was going to be stealthy. <laughs> not anymore. He's just charging for that three bucks. <laughs> oh, bugger me. <laughs> so, two boots, for a minute your pride won't let you go after the shiny thing, but you can't resist. And you, you almost like an actual cat, you're nearly down on all fours as you just sprint mm -hmm. for the laser pointer and you collide uh, with the boombox and knock it off the top of the um, of the carriage and it makes a horrible crunching cracking sound as it's made of fantasy plastic and was not you know stone or anything and kind of breaks a little on the ground and you hear the f you know the final few refrains uh, played on a flute as it just sort of like <laughs> and silence Realizing what I've just done, I get up, push myself off, and look around to see if anyone else noticed that. Other Everybody than... was looking at you. Everybody was watching. I just slowly slink into the shadow who's ashamed. <laughs> Do me and Wallace giving you a thumbs up. <laughs> um, so, Maylene, have you hopped off the captain at this point? Give him one, like, real big hug, like, mm, love you, Captain, and then she's going to hop off. Mm-hmm. Um, he is um, stood still motionless and entranced. The stopping the music didn't seem to help. Time to kill so Charming. Still on the back of the Captain. <laughs> <laughs> We have mounted um. officers again. <laughs> I'm a Canadian now! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just I happened. When I grow up, I wanted to be a Canadian, and now it's happened. <laughs> As this happens, uh, a peasant sort of walks past and goes, Oh, nice hat, E. Anyway, that was a real bad occasion. I was about That's to say good day, mate, but that was Australian. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> oh, what's that? I've just been not allowed to emigrate to Canada now after that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what are you doing? You're in the mouth of a sewer. It stretches deep and far into darkness. 
Uh, Charming is nowhere to be seen. He wasn't in the carriage, Two Boots, you notice, as you sort of, you know, jumped for the radio. Okay. Is the, car um, I, the carriage is still going and the people are still following? The people are still following. The carriage has stopped. Could I walk up to the captain and just mm -hmm. saying to myself, I mean, if Melaine isn't going to get fired for riding him, this won't get me fired. I'm just going to backhand him. To see if that's okay. not smart. Roll an attack. Uh, I assume this would be an unarmed strike. Mm-hmm. And we'll do non-lethal, because you're not trying to kill him. Okay, that'd be just a plus one. Uh, nine. Okay, um, you, um, you sort of jump up and just give him, like, a slap across the face. And, um, as your, like, your poor beans connect with his face, there is no response. He just... Okay. So it, I would assume that considering the song itself is no longer playing, but they are still charmed, we have to kill Charming, which I can definitely get behind that stealing bastard. I mean, <clears throat> that uh, uh, criminal. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, fin Finbar's going to really wish he wasn't naked on a boat right now. We get to kill Charming without him. I hope he brought sunscreen. <laughs> No, I'm sure she has cure wounds. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Um, and Dude's going to start looking for uh, Prince Charming in the crowd. Okay, so uh, roll me a perception check in the crowd. Nope, that's a nat one. Mm -hmm. uh, there are too many faces in this crowd. You can't pick him out and it's it's weird um your perception of what finbar actually looks like has kind of changed over the few weeks when you've been making these disguises of a finbar similar a finbar adjacent so you if even if he was right in front of you you probably couldn't see him but you can't see him in this crowd not finbar you're looking for charming what am i talking about not finbar i can't um, see they, they've kind of melded together yeah. in appearance well, and the smarmy personality you know that it's just it's, that yeah they've got that fuckboy vibe and it just kind of melded into one <laughs> <laughs> sorry will <laughs> But boy, um, lives, man. <laughs> um, but you do see familiar faces in this crowd. You see Chirpy, you see Addison, you see Bob, uh, you see Renard, you see anyone you've had past adventures with faces in this crowd. Well, Do is really wishing that he had learned the spell, the spell magic at this point. Um, but he didn't and hasn't, and um, so uh, he's kind of at a loss. Uh, he's just going to kind of start pushing his way through people uh, using his police skills, such as they are, to try and uh, try and find. He's going to continue searching for charming, I think. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, um, the crowd is kind of pushing you into the sewer at this point. They're still all moving en masse into this, this great sewer. Um, so are you going to just go with the flow? Because it appears to uh, me that's the direction that everybody's being drawn to. Yeah, and the, the carriage is straight ahead, is that correct? Yeah, the carriage is kind of like parked at the entrance to this sewer. And people are walking past the carriage? Deeper into yeah, they're walking like into the sewers. Okay, then yeah, he's gonna um, he's gonna keep going with them. Uh, seeing what to do does, cause could two boots try and I don't know do it like a I don't know stealth check or something and try and blend into the crowd to be ten yeah. in charm. Absolutely, as well, yeah. Roll me a stealth check. Eight. eight. So that would be a 15. 
15. Okay. So, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you know the been the mummy where all the, the people turn up and they're all going, ammo top. And then, like, Jonathan goes, ammo top, along with the crowd. If you haven't seen the mummy, that doesn't make any sense. But that's what you're doing, basically, too. But you sort of adopt a very loose uh, body pose and you, know, you stare straight ahead as you walk and careful not to spend too long, you know, looking at a thing. You're trying to look straight ahead as much as possible whilst also, mm -hmm. you know. I'm trying to, if I can, slowly start making my way towards the front of the crowd. Okay, so you... slightly quicker. Yep, so you kind of, you know, very, you very slyly make your way to the front, that's fine. Uh, Sooty Maylene, what are you doing with this crowd? Uh, have you lost the hat, Sooty? Yeah. There's no. no 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 cowboying to be had. There, there's no hat to be I don't I don't she puts the hat to retire. <laughs> there's a <laughs> solemn puts moment that on like a child's head in the crowd. It's like it's yours now. Use it wisely. <laughs> this kid is just like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this kid just kinda goes, uh um, thanks. Yeehaw! It's just like, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this child looks terrified. Um, but he kind of just like walks away. <laughs> and he go, this fucking weird woman gave me a hat. I don't know what to do. Um, am I cursed now? <laughs> All his friends are like, cast, cast me home to the place I belong. <laughs> oh, this fucking oh. Said I'd be in the desert on a place without me. So Sati has a moment of uh, of solemnity as she sadly sings songs and walks forward. Mylene, what are you up to? Are you joining this crowd? Um, yeah, but Mylene's not being kind of sneaky about it. She's kind of like shoving her way through. She's like, "Sorry, Bob. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, Addison, Addison. I don't want to. Don't want to knock you over. You're kind of frail. We're just, we're just, we're just squeeze right by you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me." I'm pretty sure, like, at some point you, like, step through someone's foot with those stilettos you're wearing. <laughs> but it's fine. They don't react. It's cool. Um, oh, God. So, um, you folks are headed into the sewers. It is very dark in here. So, do all of you have uh, night vision? Or thereabouts? I believe so. Oh, dark vision, not night vision. Jeez, I know what I'm talking about. No, but uh, I yep. would uh, light a torch. So he's got a um, a torch kind of on his uh, attached in a little holder on his back, mm -hmm. up over his head. Nice. Malene sees all. She's got dark vision. She's like, same, same for two boots. All right. <laughs> so, um. Do engages the little police light, the torch he has, and this place is um, it's gross, it's a sewer, it stinks like shit and piss and waste. There's fat bugs all over the place because you know, it was always rumored that certain fast food joints like Jack Donald's um, were dumping grease in the sewers and the waste and stuff like that. Um, turns out it was true. As as you walk beneath one particular busy Jack Donald's, there is a rush of red hot, gross, 
foul smelling burger adjacent grease that just pff, splashes onto the ground next to you. Funnel. Well, two boots is keeping a uh, two boots is keeping a his uh, expression blank to blend in. But if anyone could hear his inner monologue, it's oh god, oh god, it's not the fur, not the fur, not the, oh, it's in the fur, it's in the fur. Why is it in the fur? Just not the, the fur, and it's that on repeat in his head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dew is stuck out of funnel, and is funneling the grease into the grease trap uh, container that he has. Um, okay. He's he's refilling. Okay. Um. So. As that happens, you take four acid damage. Okay. As this um, this this black horrible goop uh, touches you, do you um, you uh, yeah? It it sucks. It is acidic. It is horrible. And I would like everybody to roll initiative. I Well, I'm rolling well. Are you so actually? Oh my. Mm -hmm. I, don't think, I don't think I've rolled above a 10 on the dice yet. I know I haven't. Yeah. Mm. I'm All not right. For shenanigan. <laughs> Do we have. An initiative between 25 and 20. 20 and 15. Oh, <laughs> oh thank God. 16, 16. <laughs> so, Sooty at the top was 16. Uh, so, 15 and 10? I have 13. 13 for two boots. 10 and 5? Um, 7. 7 for do. Uh, what did Maylene get? Four. I rolled a nat one. Four. So to do. Well, this thing rolled a zero. Cumulative. So it's right at the end. So Sooty, um, you have watched as Do sends out his little funneling host and starts to suck up this black ooze. And um, as he does, it damages him you can see it physically damage him and it sort of um sort of comes together to make a like a, a grimer pokemon-esque shape this black sort of undulating greasy oozy grossness ah uh. ah uh. ah uh. well I guess the first thing that she's going to do is kind of try to wash it away. <laughs> Just wash it away with, um, <laughs> like, you look dirty. You could use a bath. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I believe it is create water, and she's just going to make a little cloud over it. Okay. <laughs> um, is yeah, so she's going to have, like... <clears throat> 10 gallons of oh, water. Jesus. Okay. He's like, oh, um, God. Is there a rule about create water doing damage? Uh, nope. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> okay. I don't see. Yeah. I, I just realized that after casting it. Oh, well. We'll it's figure fine, out fine. something. We'll, we'll figure something out. Um, it is how it's now about... with electricity. <laughs> <laughs> how about we have it do? Um... Two d eight damage to this thing. So we we'll roll two d eight. I'll do ten. 10 damage. Okay. Sweet. One per right. gallon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
there's 10 gallons of water just uh, drop on top of this thing and you see it sort of impact but um, like grease it does kind of repel the water so uh, it did the ten it did the full 10 points of damage but it didn't seem to be super super effective against it uh, which will bring us to two boots so seeing this kind of sentient uh, mm -hmm. sentient grease that finally makes two boots snap and so with a cry of, don't touch my fur, he is going to draw his rapier and try and stab it twice. All right. Okay. Plus eight to hit. Sorry, one moment. Uh, that's a 19 to hit on the first. That hits. And on that one, I will expend the su uh, superiority die. To mm -hmm. have it make a uh, Wisdom 16 saving throw will be frightened of me until the end of my next turn. Okay. Well, it makes a 7 for the Wisdom save. However, you did hit with a melee attack, so you will take 5 points of um, acid damage. Okay. Uh, in return, it takes... Uh, sorry, one moment. Uh, 12 points of piercing. 12 points of piercing, dang. And I will make my second melee attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a uh, 13 to hit. Okay, a 13 hits, and because uh, you have hit it again, uh, mm -hmm. you only take three acid damage this time. So what damage do you do to it? 15 points of piercing damage. Fifteen, dang! And uh, two bulls is ignoring the damage he's taking because he just wants that thing gone. It's ruining his fur, his precious mm -hmm. fur that he spent so long grooming. Yeah, so you are just unleashing hell with this rapier, and as you uh, lunge in and stab, you withdraw your blade as it does it, like, there's like a spurt of ooze that comes out and like singes at you, and it hurts, but it's nothing too disastrous, and you push that pain down to work through stabbing this thing to death, which will bring us to do. Chilt, uh, well, he's, uh... Is, is he right next to the thing in melee with it? Yes. Because as soon as he felt the burn, he would have yanked back. Um, all right. He is in melee with it. Uh, all right. Since he's in melee with it, shocking grasp. Mm -hmm. um, so he's going to do that, which is... Uh, do, 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 do. I think it's a yep, melee spell attack. Okay, so it is melee, so you will get uh, acid mm -hmm. if yep. you hit. 18? Yes. All right, and it's going to take 2d8 lightning damage. Okay. 13 lightning damage. 13 lightning damage. Um, yep. It does 7 acid damage to you in response. Okay, it cannot take reactions until the start of its next turn. So, do is GTFOing. <laughs> do is like, nope. Wheels yeah. out of there. This whole time during the fight, by the way, um, mindless people are just constantly walking past you. They and through the fight they um even if they come in contact with this this ooze like they will get a a burn um but they don't react to it and they just keep walking so this is a pretty busy sort of fight area there's bodies all around you um this is why we have the rule and this is why we do not ignore the rules it's, it's very important rule um all right so after deuce 10 this brings us to maylene so Malene's like this, just trying to keep her eyes on it through all the people. And she's going to kind of slide out there with a hex. And when she gets a chance, she's going to shoot out an Eldritch Blast. Nice. And it is, the first one is a 21 to hit. That hits. All right. <sighs> I'm going to use D20 Modern Dice Roller for everything from now on. That's max damage. So I do 14 nice. damage. 
14 damage. Hot diggity dang. Okay. I'll roll another one, and that is 10 to hit. Uh, 10 hits? <sighs> this thing's AC is pitiful. All right, and then that's seven. Because I'm using my that's agonizing seven. class. And then I'll roll oh, 1d6 right. for the... Uh, Okay, so it's one extra hex damage. Nice. Nice. That was like 22 damage. Huh? All right, so it is now the turn of the ooze. And the ooze is going to... Hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, so the... <laughs> You watch as, um, like, a lump uh, of, like, black oozy grease sort of coalesces into the form of, like, a pseudopod, and it is going to lash out at Two Boots, who is currently mm -hmm. in melee with the ooze. Um, so, I need to roll to hit. Uh, it is frightened because it failed, so that would be with disadvantage. Disadvantage. Oh, oh, God. Oh, you are so lucky one of those was a 20. Um, that is still a 16 to hit. Uh, that misses. Oh, okay. 17 so, AC. Oh, so this, um, this pseudopod comes up and, and lashes out at you two boots, but you sort of like duck behind someone at the last second and it hits them instead and they take a, a nasty wound up the arm but they keep walking and you are safe from damage for this turn I, I just um, hiss at it and say no one touches the fur no one <laughs> <laughs> which will bring us back to city all right I think this time uh, 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 how far away is this grimy thing now is is it pretty much the same place it it hasn't moved. Uh, you weren't in melee okay. with it, so you've got you've got range on it. All right, all right. Maybe for once, because it doesn't look as humanoid as the things we're normally attacking. Um, I'm going to call upon lightning on this wet thing. Okay. All right. Oh, power of Thor! <laughs> Wait, does Thor, she worship whatever. Thor? <laughs> I think now, apparently now she does. Just out of Ever since you saw that picture of him with the hair. <laughs> I mean, right, it's I just can't like, blame a girl. You know, like uh, on erotic novels, it always has this Fabio, like, blonde looking thing. She just saw, like, a picture of, like, Thor looking roughly like that still the long flowing blonde hair and like ever since you say that like, right that there's a museum there's just like yes there is a museum in york called, uh, that's all about vikings because york's all about vikings but they have like a, a, a vikings in in the modern age how they're depicted and one is literally that it's a romance novel called the virile viking where it has like a shirtless sort of fabio guy <laughs> <laughs> with the hair. Oh, it's honestly gone real. I'll find the picture and put it on Twitter because it was fucking beautiful. <sighs> so that could be Sutty's Bible to Thor. <laughs> the great and mighty Thor. Uh, All right. So go ahead. Is um, it a roll to attack? Uh, do, 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 do. Dexterity saving throw. Dex save. Well, this thing is not dexterous, I'll tell you that. Hey, that's a zero. <laughs> I get to do 3d10 lightning damage. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dude's got the pom poms out. <laughs> That would be a uh, 14 total. She didn't roll to that high. 14. Okay. Um, so, 
city, you think about Hunky Thor, you channel that thirst into a thunderbolt. It launches out from your hand and zaps the ooze. <laughs> and you watch as it splits into two. And both now begin to undulate and wiggle about in gross, greasy, ooziness. But remarkably smaller um, versions. Ooze two electric boogaloo. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, is there anything else you would like to do on your turn, Sati? Uh, hide inside of due diligence. That's about all the bravery that uh, the Almighty Thor City has has time for today. Why do you have a prop for everything? <laughs> <laughs> I just look up and there's an axe now. Well, I don't have a hammer. I was quite tempted to go and grab an actual, like, just small hammer. <laughs> just take the toolbox. <laughs> yeah, just a toolbox hammer. Like, <laughs> mighty She just thinks he's a carpenter. It's like Jesus, you know? It's fine. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh god, alright, two boots are up. Uh, so there are now two oozes mm -hmm. in front of you. <clears throat> now the smart thing to do would probably be to disengage and back away. I have never said that two boots was smart. So I am making one attack against one, and I now make the second attack against... Yeah, let's actually go for the same one. So two rapier attacks against one of them. Alright. So the first is a, uh, a dirty 20 to hit. Mm hmm. That hits. The second would be a uh, 23 to hit. Yep, that hits. So are these uh, against the same thing or are you attacking? Yeah, I'll go for the same one. Okay, are we attacking the one you've been attacking previously? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, I'll let's, yeah. Just attacking so the same thing in a mindless way. Those village. two attacks do hit. So let me deal your damage first, and then you can deal the damage to the creature. So that's eight acid on the first one, and one acid on the second. So nine total acid damage from those attacks. Uh, roll your damage on the ooze. Yep. Uh, that is 21. What is the damage total? 21. Okay. So as you... Um, see these two oozes now um weighing up your options you decide to go all in on attacking the one you were attacking you unleash a flurry of of, of devastating blows and the ooze kind of just kind of loses all form and just splats on the ground there is one remaining ooze no um, one touches the fur and then i'm backing away you're backing away. Okay, so the secondary ooze will get an attack of opportunity on you. Mm-hmm. That's fine. All right. Uh, that is going to be a 23 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Is this technically a melee attack? It is a melee attack, yep. Okay. I'll bring my rapier up to block it and use uh, parry to let, try and lessen the damage. Okie doke. So, um, there's a couple of different damage types in... well, there's two. So you will take uh, seven bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. And... ooh... There is... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, that's unfortunate. That is 24 acid damage. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, I'd managed to reduce it by 6 to 25 total. Okay, so 25. It's still up. Okay, it is Barely. now actually that Ooze's turn. <coughs> I and thought it, it was... It's not Ooze's turn? Well, because it's split, so I, I rolled oh, off it because it. Yep. Like I had another initiative. If it's, um, if it's <clears> worth <throat> anything, since I didn't move the round before, I'm moving 60 feet away. Just, okay, just, <laughs> just getting the hell out of there. Okay, so the, ooze, 
Mm -hmm. uh, it is just going to move towards the nearest combatant that it can, which is probably do. Because Maylene it's was like in the feet. crowd. Yeah. Yep. So it would be do. Well, there's no saying it even hits. We'll see how it does. That is uh, 16 to hit. Um, I'm actually going to. Yeah, that's going to hit. Never mind. Okay. So that is uh, six bludgeoning damage. Okay. Plus. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Eight. 26 acid damage. I rolled three eights. Deuce down. Ooh. Uh, City, um, your world just collapses around you as Dew just hits the deck. <clears throat> so yeah, Dew. Dew just that whole uh, R2D2. Pfft, that's <laughs> what Dew does. It's your turn now, Dew. Death save. Okay. That's a oh, 16. You're good. You good, you good. All right, Melene, you're up. Oh, what do I want to do? All right, I'm going to use a bonus action to switch my hex over to the new one. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to shoot two Eldritch Blasts at this nasty little thing. Get it. 15 for the first one. Hits. 13 damage. 13 damage. Okay, yep. Yeah. 23 to hit. Eight damage. Eight damage. Nice. And then a four for my hex damage. A four for the hex. Dang, that's some good damage. Good job, Maylene. All right. Um, so we never have low monsters. Nope. <laughs> so Ooze Prime is dead, which will bring us back to Sooty. So, uh, Dew has fallen over. It's your turn. Do is unresponsive. All right. Well, I don't know whether it's more appropriate to use mending <laughs> <laughs> or cure wounds for due diligence. <laughs> it's the cure wounds, but we can right, we can flavor it as mending, but it's a cure wounds mechanically. <laughs> Oh, I have something perfect for this. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Fuck. What do you have for this? Come back. What do you have? But she has like a welder's mask. Not quite, but I do have this. <laughs> I could have had the safety vest too, but that would take longer. <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> Alright, so roll us that cure wounds then. <laughs> Alright. Oh god. <clears throat> Is it 1d8? Ooh, that comes to a total of nine. Ooh, <gasps> nice. Oh, and Susie, just so you're aware, you were mm -hmm. eight off of making dude dead dead. Why would you tell me that? So your mom will get 
mad at you. I'm mad no. at me. <laughs> cool, thanks. You're in big trouble now, Susanna. <laughs> I it's do a mom kill do. <laughs> Don't kill him. <laughs> but uh you'll basically see like a welding set come <laughs> I guess. He's like, no! Joe! We can get you through this! There's like a ting 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 and then the <laughs> sparks from a welder. <laughs> <clears throat> do you are back alive once more uh if is there anything else you would like to do with your turn city uh i no no just like breathe for me do or you know beep for me do <laughs> beep damn you you hear the hit <laughs> You hear the hiss of the coffee maker starting back up. <laughs> she lives! <laughs> he lives! <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> <laughs> All right, two boots. <laughs> hey, so I have two quick questions. One, when rolling yes. this character, I could have a random mm -hmm. magic item, correct? Mm -hmm. Two, would a healing ointment technically work on a warforged? On a yeah. um, okay. Wait, what? Hmm. Okay. Uh, so two two boots is going to run over to Dew. Mm -hmm. uh, and on his hip, he has like a glass jar. He's going to take that out, take a scoop of uh, aloe vera smelling mixture, and apply it to Dew, and it will slowly be absorbed into him. And he regains 2d8 plus 2 hit points. What's up, Brie? So, I feel like I remember in an episode we discussed that ointments would be considered a potion for the wild magic surge. That if do <gasps> use them, their home would burn down. So, I just want to say that that's why I freaked out. So, the TPD did just burn down. It did. But that's okay, you didn't know. That's uh, so, no, it's, that's why I stopped myself. I was going to say well, stop, but I was like, no, 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 no. Two boots has no a, idea of that. And it's a good thing it's that okay, none of us Yeah, if, if anything, this... The desk. The desk! <laughs> the desk can move. <laughs> Please we know the desk can move the because desk. the desk has disappeared before. We'll have to tell you what, if you want to find out what happens to the desk, tune in next week. Oh, there we go. Please don't, please don't tell me I just killed the desk. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. chat, uh, chat is screaming, the desk can move! Dew uh, heals 15. Dew heals 15. He was just one day away from retirement. <laughs> oh God. He has to live to see his son, the stool, become... I am just praying. I am just praying. I did not just kill that desk. Oh God! Well, we'll have to find out. Um, let me. You will be the most infamous guest. I mean, the most infamous guest ever. I I don't know if I regret it more or if I love it more. I don't know. God. I'm just writing that down so I don't forget. <clears throat> it depends how, oh, how cruel I'm feeling. Um, so, yes, uh, is there anything else you would like to do with your turn to Boots Desk Murderer? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, just move it in, just move it in. Come on, keep this. <laughs> just a spear. Some of the get heart. breaker of chains, <laughs> two boots gets <laughs> Desk Murderer. <laughs> murderer of Desks. Uh, as a bonus, as a bonus action, uh, I will is it uh, do my second wind to get back mm -hmm. some, some of my own health because I am low. So I heal uh, fourteen, mm -hmm. and uh, that will be my turn. Okay, so after your turn, it brings us back to the ooze. Um, I'm gonna. 
Because right now, Sooty, Do, and Two Boots are in melee because they're all like crowded around each other. So I'm gonna just go for roll. the decimal. Just go for the one that committed so much sacrilege. I'm gonna roll uh, a d6. So one, two for Two Boots, three, four for Sooty, five, six for Do. Two boots, you're getting it. Yep. Maybe if I hit. Um, probably not with a thirteen. You're fine. No, that misses. <clears throat> that misses. Uh, okay, do you are up? <sighs> right. Um, I'm in melee with it where I didn't want to be. So, um, shocking grasp because I want to get the heck out of here. Nice. Right, so. 16. 16 hits. And seven points of lightning. Seven points of lightning. Okay, dang. All right, this thing, you're whittling it down. You're whittling it down. It's not dead yet, but you're getting that. Um, Are you the, getting um, the door open? Yeah, I've got the, well, I've got the hatch open for Sooty. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I'm, can I hold my movement until Sooty jumps in? Yes. Okay. I'll allow that. And then you can like, whoop, with Sooty. All right. Yep. Um, okay. So that will bring us back to Maylene. Morgana. Pew, pew, pew. Because that's what I... Do best. Thirteen to hit. Thirteen hits. Eight damage. Eight damage. Okay. Oh, this thing's nearly dead. Nineteen okay. to hit. Yep. Nine damage. Oh, so close. Roll me that hex. It is a. Uh, Three. It is dead. Congratulations. Okay, and a, a sort of quiet falls upon this tunnel. I mean, there's the sound of the shuffling feet, um, but the the movement of the oozes, the 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 horrible gurgling sounds, the horrible wet sort of gross, sticky sounds coming from these oozes have stilled. You all have a moment to collect yourselves, to heal up, to chill the fuck out after that horrible encounter. What would you like to do? So I'm going to take another dollop of that uh, ointment mm -hmm. and try and rub it onto where my fur has been burnt away. Just mm -hmm. more ink to myself at the loss of my glorious fur that it took so long to go. Yeah, you're going to have a little bald patch for a while, but it will grow back. I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay, smart. Okay, uh, is there anything anybody would like to do in particular while this happens? Uh... Where are the people? Can we look around for the... Uh, where's the crowd of people? Are they still moving forward? They're still moving forward. Yeah, they're moving deeper into the sewers. Uh, I need. I think I need to relight the torch because it probably went out when he fell over. Yep. And then take I do have around. a very interesting sort of smell about you as you probably landed in the water yeah. you're gonna have to have... like get some polish on that metal get the wire brush out yeah he, for, fortunately he doesn't have much of um, olfactory receptors so that's a bluff it's fine for do yeah mm -hmm. um yeah. As you are kind of, uh, of recouping, uh, resting up, as Two Boots is healing himself, as Dew is relighting his torch and casting mage armor on himself, um, Meline, 
a, a child comes up to you and they're wearing a, a, a bizarre hat. It, is, it appears to be like bejeweled and shiny and white. Uh, you saw Sooty wearing it earlier. Um, and they uh, come up to you and they took your sleeve. Um, excuse me, miss. Did you steal Sooty's hat? No, she put it on me. She's weird. That I am. Yes, she is. What? What do you? Yes. What? Um. I'm a bit lost. I think. Oh, are you, are you not supposed to be? Are, are you? Are you a police lady? I am a police lady. Cool. Official. I like. I like your horns. They're like mine when I have them. And this kid says that as that's too? not. Are they under? No, I have them sometimes, but not all of the time. I want horns some of the time. Well, no, not some of the time. I like having them all of the time because see, it holds room for. And she kind of like moves her hair around, and mm -hmm. Horace kind of peeks up. Like, hmm. Do you have a spider that lives in your hair when you have horns? No, that's so cool. I want one. Well, when you hmm. have your horns out, hold on. Hey, Gretchen, would you ride on a kid's head for a while? Just like sometimes. <laughs> it's just a little cigarette smoke that just goes out of Maylene's top. <laughs> she kind of nods in response. Well, little kid, if you ever need an eight-legged creature to ride on your horns, just let me know. I've got plenty. Okay, uh, give me a second. And you see this little boy just kind of concentrate. And he's like a little kid pretending he's from Dragon Ball. He stands there and he sort of squares off his shoulders and squats a little and his arms starts flexing him in. And uh, he makes like a constant, like a <clears throat> sound. And as he does, he watches his body shifts into that of a young black dragon. See, I have horns sometimes. Do's backpedaling because the last time we saw one of these, it attacked us. You're gonna want to see this, Gretchen. <laughs> Just little tentacles go. <laughs> and she what just instantly, she just launches <laughs> just <laughs> on this dragon's head. And this dragon's like, cool. And this kid seems to like not even care that he's a dragon. Like, the space in here is now a bit more cramped than it was. So now that we're friends, Dragon Kid, because, I mean, let's be real, what's your name? Yep. Yeah. Um, my name is Alex. Alex. Well, hi, Alex. Do you <laughs> want to go eat someone? Um, sure. My mom said I'm not well, allowed up. to, but she's dead. There we go! So is mine! Let's go kill this man named Prince Charming. Cool! He sounds like an asshole. <laughs> oh, he's an asshole. And you hey this guys, dragon. I made a new friend! <laughs> this dragon puts up like a wing over his mouth because he said asshole. He's like, cool. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm you're muted. So Sorry, Alex, okay. you're muted. Alexes are allowed to swear like sailors. <laughs> I said Alex, I'm By the way, great name! <laughs> totally not biased. So I made a friend, and we're gonna have him eat, eat, eat. Charming kid, kid. How, how, how did you, um, how did your mom die? I don't know. She just didn't come home one day. Right. Um. Just trying to remember. If they actually killed that black dragon outside of the castle with the thorns or not. Um, luckily for Dew, that was a green dragon. And that was actually Marilee Efficent, the fashion editor at Fogue magazine. So the that we saw like, naked photos of him with. Yes. Right. Okay. So there's Just, no guilt about this specific dead child's parents or parent, dead parents of the 
you know, Good. yeah, just just a little rattled from being dead, having been dead. I mean, it is entirely um, feasible. He's still that rebooting. At some point, you have killed a black dragon that could have been this kid's mom. Who knows? No, we're not going to mention that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he's here. He's still rebooting, so it's it, it's taking him a bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. what are you guys doing? Oh, um, I mean, I know well, we're going to go eat somebody, but what 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 are you doing? Well, see, we're police officers, so I mean, technically, if you eat this man, you have police power to then eat all of the bad we guys. Have a, we have a warrant. Yeah. Can I? Can I be a policeman? Of course. I mean, Gretchen loves you, and she does a lot of the background checks now. Ah, <gasps> cool. I see this, this dragon just smile. <laughs> These big, and it looks terrifying, but it's kind of like a happy puppy. Just big and scaly, with wings. Oh, I'm going to turn this into the most powerful, evil, lawful evil black dragon in the entire world. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's it's just like, put your hand up and goes, TPD! <laughs> and he lets out like a little baby, rawr! And uh, are you folks head further into the sewer, I guess? Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Can Do I try and... printed out a, a rule book for the dragon. Um, and he turns to you and says, um, can, can you kind of hold on to that for me until I'm back being a person because I don't have hands? I can't read, so I'll just hang on to it. I hold on to the books. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll get can you a badge. Oh, can I try and redo my stealth check? As I, you absolutely can, yes. Thank you. As I wipe away the dirty water that was thrown all over me when the dragon suddenly took up all the space. Uh, it's eight. Uh, that would be a 23 on stealth. 23? Okay, yeah. You just, like, merge with the people that are walking. Um, are any of you other guys? I mean... It's going to be pretty difficult for a black dragon <laughs> to stealth. Colleen um, and Alex, the dragon, are like, she's like clacking her heels and the, like the little tiles on the side. And we're just like, kind of like, yep, we're off to kill Prince Charmin. Uh, Gretchen has uh, sat underneath the hat. Uh, that Alex the dragon was wearing, so she's kind of just having a good time. Every now and then it lifts up and like a plume of smoke comes out. Hot boxing the hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and you follow the tunnels through, and you follow this stream of people, which seems to be never ending. It's it's bizarre. There's you never knew there were so many police officers in Thailandia. Um, but before long, you open up into like this this very large sort of open circular boss room, um, and people are just lining the walls. And you see in the middle is charming, and he looks at you all, and he smiles warmly. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How lovely to see you here. How can I help you today? This is the one we're going to eat. And you, uh, as you say that, Alex kind of like turns and he lowers and his nostrils flare and his eyes squint. And he kind of goes like, like a cat fun. ready to pounce. Oh my gosh. Do we have an adoption agency with a TPD? Can Melina legally... I mean, she can't read the adoption papers, but can she legally ad adopt a young adult dragon child? Or young life dragon child? I, I will have this paperwork for you. Yes! God, my perfect son. Uh, so, <laughs> Two Boots is going to line up on the walls with all the other in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in spelled people, just to try and maintain that ruse for as long as he can. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so are you just going to walk in to meet Charming or are you, cause right now you're kind of like in the entrance to this room. Are the people uh, uh, still walking in as well? Are they going yeah, joining him in the room? 
they're like lining uh, lining the walls like and once uh, one ring is full they'll make another ring and they're sort of making a, a small arena sort of of bodies can I just kind of take a look around this room and see if I notice anything unusual about it why did why here what what has he got planned okay uh, roll me perception check okay Hopefully I'll roll a little bit better than I have been. At pro no, 10. 10, okay. Um, so you scan around. It's pretty hard to get a good read of this room as you can only go by the torchlight and there are a lot of bodies in here that seems to obscure um, maybe anything that would be on the walls that would give it away. Um, one thing you do notice about this room, it is very large and you wonder if this was selected because it could hold a lot of bodies. Like this room is particularly like a great place because you could store hundreds of people in here. Ruby said hold lots of bodies are never good. Uh -uh. Uh, just out of curiosity, with two boots lining up in the circles, how mm -hmm. far away will Fizzy from Prince Charming if he needs it if Prince Charming if he needs to move? Well I I imagine what two boots would probably do is you would go join a position on the wall, but then slowly start to make your way towards Charming so you're in a good position. Um, okay. But like maybe get his flank so he can't see you. Um, I would say he's about 30 feet away from you. Okay. I'm just slightly drawing my vapor from its sheath. So it's just mm -hmm. the, like an inch of the blade is visible. Just ready mm -hmm. myself to attack. Yeah, and he... Um, he kind of uh, looks around and uh, he uh, he says, uh, <laughs> you all cause me uh, quite the bother, you know, by locking me in that closet with the cream. Uh, one quick question, Susanna. How high is the ceiling? Oh, it's very high. This is like a vaulted, sewery kind of like big underground vault ceiling. Oh, excellent. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> um, Malim's going to look to Alex. Mm -hmm. So I know we've just become very close friends and we are going to eat this man. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. Do you see how high... How, how good is your flying skills? Are you a good flying boy? Yeah. I'm just saying. You have great vantage points. I mean, look at how much space he has. You could acid breath him and... Not get in any trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I could, like, get the other people by accident, though. That's true. Also, I don't know I don't know what the taste of a Charming is covered in acid. probably bad. Maybe just a good chomp. But if you're high on the air, you're Very less likely to get targeted. So what I recommend is when we start to attack him, you fly up into mm -hmm. the air. So that way you can just drop on him. And you will get the final chomp. Oh, okay, okay. No, I, I like, I, I like that. I like, I like that. I can get him. I can help. Cool, cool. Um, on that note, Melina's is going to. Uh, uh, she's gonna, just, she's gonna start walking towards the front. She'll be like, "All right, stay here." And when things get a little crazy, that's when I want you to sco to soar. And she's gonna kind of click her heels t towards uh, charming, like towards the front. It's like, mm -hmm. what are you, what is your plans, you f creamy weirdo? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. From now on, whenever I find someone weird, you creamy weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> you creamy a weirdo. My new favorite insult. <laughs> Jesus. Um... He he says, um, look, really, we could have been something, you know, we could have, oh, the children we could have had, but you see, when you and your cohorts, they uh, shoved me in that closet and you destroyed that staircase, you covered me in grease and set me on fire, well, that... That upset me, and I'm not a man who likes to be upset. And, well, I have a new girlfriend. Sorry, tragic. Uh, I know. Uh, I'm off the market. Very sad for all involved. 
but do you see she she here has has helped me a lot you see um she's given me a marvelous way for me to get my revenge on all of you you see every single officer of the TPD, yeah, he's monologuing, he is on one, is in the sewer right now, which means Can my beautiful... Him while he's doing that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me roll that wisdom save. <laughs> That's a three. <laughs> so he says, my beautiful girl... And he is frozen when, in place. When he freezes go, like that... You're up! <laughs> Malin's gonna go, well... Charming, I hate to tell you this, but I already have a child. <laughs> She's gonna say, Alex. <laughs> okay, I'm um, okay, and he comes <laughs> running. <laughs> he comes running forward, and he um just scoops up charming in his mouth and chomps and uh, he kind of bites and, goes, <laughs> and spits him out and goes <laughs> what's wrong they're very bitter yeah it tastes bad um but you look at charming like crumpled and broken on the ground and covered in dragon spit and um <laughs> A little known fact about Prince Charming, ever since the closet incident, every time he had a moment of high stress or got emotionally worked up, he started to sweat cream. So broken, covered in dragon spit, he watches like pouring out of his tunic. He's you just cream. cream. <laughs> oh god, he's cream filled. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Malin, um... <laughs> oh no. Oh, I bet he was double stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So, uh, not trying not to break his stealth, Two Boots is just going to mutter under his breath. And that is why you never monologue. Does no one le read the villain's handbook anymore? Okay, so right, <laughs> right <laughs> now, uh, Two Boots, you're muttering to yourself about not monologuing, mm -hmm. and you're all stood above the body of Charming. What would you like to do right now? It appears as if the spell upon the people is still unbroken. Um, what if we just start violently stabbing Charming over and over and over again? <laughs> because Malin has a single solitary sharpened butter knife, and she wants to just start stabbing charming going like how dare you taste bad i promised my son he could eat you and now i have to find a new person for him to eat she's just gonna start stabbing him again and again oh my God. <laughs> yeah, i think two boots would join in muttering to himself and out loud no one steals the credit from the treasure cat no one no oh one. my god oh my god <laughs> two boots and maline both on their knees just stabbing his <laughs> 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 like oh all of the TPD, like like blankly <laughs> staring at them. I'd like to imagine that due diligence just raises a hand. To <laughs> <laughs> it just it just kind of ushers her in and closes the pedal, oh. and he's gonna start trying to hustle and just kind of taking the people and turning them around and pointing them the other direction to get them walking out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as Meleen and Two Boots reenact office space with <laughs> Charming being the printer <laughs> but with a sharpened butter knife <laughs> and a rapier <laughs> so you have been safely brought into a, a little hidey hole within Dew's body. 
<laughs> and two is just spinning. His, his wheels are going extra fast. He's just spinning people around so they don't have to watch this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's cream, there's blood, it's <laughs> awful. Charming can't scream because he's being held. Um, it's, this is a horrific <laughs> <laughs> This is the worst thing I've ever seen in a d, &D before. Okay. I'm crying. I'm I just I need just to... No, go ahead. I love the idea of me leaning and two boots just looking up, realizing what the other is doing, and just going straight back into the <laughs> <laughs> Just a split second of realization, and then just straight back into it. Oh, oh Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is the worst thing I've ever had to narrate before. This is awful. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh. I feel like at this point as well. Oh, Alex kind of just covers his own face with his wing and goes, Um, <laughs> tell me when you're done and I can look. Oh. Um. However, as oh. you stab and stab and stab into the bloody creamy form of charming, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I made it worse. It is like somebody has gone to town in Betty's tea rooms. It's like someone has smashed scones all over this poor fucker on the ground. <laughs> Well, her only has an important question. Uh, does it froth? Like whipped cream? With the ferocity of the attacks, you are beginning <laughs> to whip this cream. Oh, God. <laughs> if the worst thing about it, too, is if you imagine this from a perspective of he creams when he's terrified. That is like his silent screams as he slowly <laughs> dies, and Malene just doesn't give a fuck. More and more cream. <laughs> just... Dude, it just peaks. Keeps going. Oh God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you probably like, already I did my turkey and it just go. <laughs> it's so like a piping story. bag where somebody's <laughs> put too much pressure and it's just exploded. Bad. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh god. Oh. Whoever gave us that uh freaking Wild Magic what was it? Surge. Magic Surge. I wish they were here to see what you've done right now. Oh you've made you've made art tonight. Um <clears throat> Jackson Pollock style. <laughs> He's just all over. So <clears throat> As Charming's last breath leaves his body, um, the breath seems to coalesce and makes a sort of a, a large humanoid uh, spirit, ghost, something, <clears throat> a large humanoid form, um, which appears to be displeased and incredibly disgusted as the cream is still flying, as I think it takes you a couple of seconds to realize that this thing's appeared. Has Du been able to get at least some people out of the room just by kind of like getting them turned around and walking back down the sewers? That's what he's trying to do is get them out of this room. I feel like uh, Do has like um, a little inbuilt fork like lift attachment, and so you've just been like putting little forks under people's feet, wheeling them out, and, and like dropping them in the sewer. Um, <clears throat> but this large spirit thing has appeared, and I would like everybody to roll initiative. Yeah. Oh my god. This was a this was a memorable one. <laughs> like a I'll see you in therapy memorable. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> I'll see you in therapy memorable. 
<laughs> PTSD <laughs> indeed. <laughs> oh, no one is going to be able to look at a trifle ever again. Um, <laughs> is there any initiative between 25 and 20? No. 20 and 15? 18. 15. So 18 for Dew. Uh 15 and 10. Uh, I got to 10. 10 for two boots. And what did Sutty get? Uh, I got an 11, actually. Oh, 11. Okay. So Sutty. Two boots. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So top of the round, we have Dew. You are just wheeling back into the room after depositing Addison in the sewers. Uh, you managed to put your uh, forklift them out uh, to see this spirit uh, appear in above Maylene and Two Boots as they are going to town on making a scone out of Charming. And it's scone, Magic not scone. Don't song. hurt me. Magic missile. Magic. Let's go. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Twelve force damage. Twelve force damage. That is a valid point in chat there. So just to recap, not only has the crew burnt the police station down, but they've also committed cold-blooded murder in front of the entire TPD. <laughs> I'd forgotten I'd done that. Hey, okay. we did not burn down the CPD. There's no proof that it was our cause. You can blame it on no. farming. Okay, uh, anything else you would like to do, Do? Uh, I think he's going to stay kind of um, back and he's trying to keep pushing people out as, as much as he can. Okay, okay. Uh, Maylene, you're up. So uh, as you stab in with the butter knife, you look up and there's this big angry spirit thing looking down at you. Malin's and it does kind of up. still look like Tommy. Malin's gonna stand up and she's gonna brush his like excess cream off her like dress. She's gonna look at him. I'm not done with you. She's gonna put her hand up and cast poison spray. Ooh. So okay. A, what is that? A constitution saving throw. Con save. Okay, that is ooh, that's a twenty-two, so he makes this uh -oh, he makes the save. Do I still take damage moves. from that though? Uh no, because it's a cantrip. Okay. Uh that's fair she'll enough. put up her two middle fingers and go. Hey Alex, have you ever fought a ghost before? Oh shit, I didn't roll for uh for the dragon hang on. Oh, I rolled worse than that thing. Fuck. Um, and he'll go. No, but this is cool. Oh yeah. Can't believe you're my new mom. She like giddy, like kind of does a giddy wiggle, covered oh. in blood and cream. Mm hmm. <laughs> All <laughs> right, Seti. Seti, you are up. So. I'm probably still inside due diligence, right? Yeah, yes. I think I still. So I think Sooty's just gonna be kind of rocking back and forth, and we're like, "You got this, Jew. You got this." And cast guidance. He's <laughs> 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 he's he's got he's made sure that you have the headphones on and the music is playing and. <laughs> Sail away, sail away, sail away. And yeah, cranberries. Well, you know, when in when in stressful moments, and yeah. <laughs> All right, so as Enya plays softly, City you cast guidance on Dew. Oh, two boots, you're up. <laughs> so, seeing Merlene stop stabbing, uh -huh. I'm going to stop stabbing and look up at what she's looking at. Mm. Wipe my rapier off on uh, Charming's hair or clothing, mm. whatever's most accessible and most clean. Look up at this spectre and say, No one. 
And I mean no one escapes the Cheshire Cat Thief's wrath. Not even in death. And I'm taking a vapor strike. Nice. And it's a... Uh, let me just double check with that. It is a uh, plus eight. Sorry, one moment. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. 22 will hit. And I will uh, use a superiority die to make that a menacing attack. So that's another DC 16 wisdom saving throw. Or be frightened. Ooh. Okay. Uh, let me roll for that. Uh, that is a 17. That makes so it them. makes the save. And But that is uh, 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage, nice. And then I'll take my second attack. Mm hmm. Uh, which is a 24 to hit. That will hit. And I'll do the exact same thing. Force that All right. Force another save. Let's go. Uh, that one is a 14, so he fails the save. He is now afraid of you. Yep, and takes 13 points of damage. And 13 points of damage. And I will Damn. go in an action, another action surge and take another two attacks. Nice. Get him. The Cheshire, the Cheshire Cat's Wrath is fierce. Mm -hmm. so that would be... So the first is a 21. That'll hit. The second is a 24. That hits. And overall, and both of them takes 22 more points of damage. Hot dang okay when two boots gets angry he gets angry and yeah he does fur is his fur is absolutely ruined his blood <laughs> and cream can i can't keep a straight face <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah the cat that got the cream <laughs> What is today's episode? <laughs> what is this? I'm just going to break down laughing and move on to the next person. I really don't need to go to the gym for like another month after this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Oh God, ghost of the cat of half. Ghost charming. Uh, it says, so anyway, as I was saying, my very pity continues with this monologue, and he is going to swipe at uh, at two boots twice. With disadvantage. Um, with disadvantage. Uh, so let me do the first one. Uh, you see, has uh, in his spirit form, he is drawn like a, 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 a spirit sword, which he is going to use to hit you with. Um... But he's not, because that was a uh, 13 to hit on the first. And... A 6 to... No, not 6. A uh, 12 to hit on the second, so no. He yeah, is too busy monologuing. And whoosh, whoosh, both swipes miss, which will bring us to Alex, the baby dragon, who is going to... Oh, shit, let me get to dragon in my book. Fuck. Oh, I was just on that too. Where are you, baby dragon? Okay, he is going to. He's going to acid breath at Charming. He's going to angle it so he can just hit Charming because I'm the DM and I am allowed to say that. Uh, so Charming needs to make a deck save. He makes the save, but... Oh my god, there's so many dice. Isn't it, like, Wait. stupid high? Like, like, like 11 d Yeah, 11 d yeah. For a, Even for a young dragon, that it's a stupid amount of damage. Right. 69, nice! <laughs> I rolled a 69. <laughs> so I but half that... My son! Malin collapsed. This is so like, appropriate yeah! in so many ways. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> oh, Just goes to show you that anyone can be a parent. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> Even illiterate Maylene. <laughs> yeah. Who talks to demons in her head and has like a, a, a vicious octopus. Sometimes a family is a dragon, a liter literate warlock, a cat, a robot, and a halfling listening to Enya. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do your. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, um, last last week when they went out, um, he had that bag of a hundred gold pieces, nearly used a few of them. He's going to weigh out about 15 pounds worth of this gold in its pouch and the trebuchet arm. And he's casting catapult at third level. It's dude's big yeet. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So I, if I'm not going to say it's a ranged spell attack. Just verifying. Yes, I think. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. Come on, dice. <laughs> Sixty-nine against the cream. <laughs> also, that's uh, an at one. Oh no. Um. Oh yes. Great. Me and two boots directly below. Well, <laughs> Doom's making it rain. I think right on him. Is there a thing Wait, about catapult that he miss? Um, oh, wait, no, he has to make a deck save. Oh. Yay. Oh, whew. yeah, no, he has okay. to make a deck save. Okay, 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 we're, okay. We're, we're cool, cool. Okay, we can, we can. Right. Okay. DC 15. Hey, that's an eight. All right, so that's going to be 5d8 bludgeoning damage. <clears throat> Excuse me. I misread the spell. Thank goodness. Uh, so that's thirteen bludgeoning. Nice. I can't even roll damage, but yes, thirteen bludgeoning. You could even add. Wait, where do you add the d4? Because you could add the d4 to it as well. Oh, to the damage. Can I'm you not add sure it to how the guidance damage? works? Or is it I don't think. Uh, uh, or is it just to the? Uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just the, like, the checks. Yeah, headache. Gotcha. You're fine. Yep. <laughs> okay. Never mind. We good. We good. We good. We good. We good. Is there anything else Dee would like to do on his turn? Um. Back up another twenty twenty five feet. All right. Yep. Okay. You. <laughs> yeah. Put the I, wheels I in want reverse. to stay more. Yeah, I want to stay out of range of this creature as far as it being able to come to me in one turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's like a beep, beep, caution, vehicle reversing. Beep, beep, yeah, a little flashing light. Backwards. Yep. Uh, Maylene, you are up. Hmm. Hmm. What am I going to do? Um. We'll just do a Hex and Eldritch Blast combo. Wait, no. We won't do a Hex, because I think necrotic damage heals the undead. I feel like that Moline would know that. She's killed enough things in her life to know that. So she'll just shoot two beams at him. Get him. 21 to hit. 21 hits. Five game hinge. All right. Alright, okay. Oh, that's a natural 20! <laughs> that's that's for... 22 damage. Damn. Pew, pew. Ooh. Should get... <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. I can... Oh my god, I can't even... Ah. Maths, why? Okay, so <laughs> Merlin, you let forth these dark beams of energy that just blast holes into uh, Ghost Charming, but he hardly seems to notice as he's still monologuing this whole time. And like, has he said anything about just... his girlfriend during this time? 
No, he's gone back to his childhood and how he knew he was destined for greatness and, and on this day and back at school and they always picked on him, but he was always... Um, all right, which will bring us to Sooty. We've moved on right. from Orinoco Flow and the music is now uh, The Girl from Ipanema. <laughs> There's also some Yanni yes. on there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lordy. Um, I think at this point, she will open up um, mm -hmm. her, her hatch in in Jew. She'll open up Jew's hatch. Right? That's how this works. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she will do um, Entangle. Ooh. Okay, so that is a deck save for me, I believe, right? A strength save. Oh, strength save. That's a 16. That passes. Dang it. Okay, but he is uh, now on difficult terrain. Hell yeah. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Any movement or anything like that? Because Dew is, is like always moving backwards. So uh, he may be dragging you out of the range of stuff at some point soon. No, he's, he's not going to we'll go too far out of range. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. After that, she's like, Yeah! You! <laughs> Just the doll. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, after Sooty, we have two boots. So, wiping some of the blood and cream mi mixture from my face, a very wide, almost mad looking smile on my face. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say to Charming, I am not crazy. My reality is just different from yours. But for love of all that is holy, shut the fuck up and take two attacks at him. <laughs> Get him. Uh, so the first is a 22 to hit. That hits. The second is a 11 to hit. That one does not. Okay. He takes a total of eight points of piercing damage. Eight piercing damage, nice, okay. And that wide Cheshire Cat grin is on my face the whole time. Mm-hmm, okay. Which is back to uh, Charming's turn. And he says, oh yeah, but anyway, getting back to my <laughs> new girlfriend, you like her. Very powerful sort. She really runs the show around here. She gave me this new tattoo, look. And he rolls up his ghost sleeve, and you see he has a large red apple tattooed on his bicep uh, with a pair of lips on it as if it's been kissed. Um, and he is going to... Um, keep attacking two boots because two boots is next to him. Now the fear effect was that for just one round, or do did he get a chance yes. to save? It's only it was just for one round. Yep. So okay. No, no so balls. he is no longer afraid of you, and he's going to take two attacks. Uh, the first being a uh twenty three to hit. I go to try and parry it, and it's. Slips past my guard. That's a hit. So it gets you. And the second is the same. I rolled the same result twice. Okay. So both 23. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yep, yeah. You take uh, 14 slashing damage on the first. Uh, oh, 14 slashing damage and. Uh, five thunder damage as the wet blade he hits you with lets out a boom as it contacts you. Um, on the first hit, on the second hit, you take six slashing and four thunder. I am looking very, very rough right now. Uh, he says, uh, what's the matter, kitty cat? Charming got your tongue. <laughs> Which, you know, he yeah. knows that thing. <laughs> but he's very pleased with himself. Alex is very much not impressed with him and is going to 
attack him three times. My gonna... son! Okay, the bite is a lot. <laughs> is 21. The claw is 24. And the other claw is 13, which doesn't hit. So he hits with a bite and a claw. So, do, do, do. Oh my god, I need D10s for this? Ooh. Don't get to use dragons often, so thank you, whoever donated for the dragon. Uh, uh, uh. So he takes. All right, so Alex lets forth some real nasty blows on Spirit Charming, who seems um, nonplussed at a dragon being there. He is confused. Um, but nonetheless, he's quite pleased with himself for making that joke that was a terrible joke. And it will bring us back to Do. All right. Um, Do is going to move closer to the uh, to Two Boots mm -hmm. so that uh, Suti can help them out um, because he cannot. And he's going to distract um, Charming by Magic Missile at fourth level. Or at second Ooh. level, excuse me. Okay, doke. Seventeen force damage. Seventeen, hot damn. Okay, uh, da -ba -ba. so pew, 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 pew. the uh, the middle missile launcher pops up. The missiles fly out of dew with the pew pew laser sounds. An impact, uh, ghost charming. He is looking very rough. He's not looking great. Uh, Maylene, you're up next. <laughs> Maylene's gonna try and taunt him while she's like mm -hmm. gonna shoot her eldritch blast. She'll be like, you know, Finbar's more attractive than you, anyways. You're a big, ugly, creamy weirdo. Uh, dirty twenty to hit the first one. Yep. For seven damage. Uh huh. And 13, so the second one doesn't hit. But she's gonna nope. use just the rest of her free movement and action just to like yell at him and give shitty insults. <laughs> she just keeps doing it like sideways too. She's like. <laughs> you hear him actually as you say that Finbar's more attractive. He like kind of goes, oh! <gasps> puts a hand on his chest <laughs> he is upset um sooty you are up all right i think how how damaged is this guy looking or not not really a little bit kind of he's getting to the point where like maybe one or two more hits we'll finish him off he's looking bad okay then I think Sooty is going to uh, you know she's gonna jump out and do her classic as she lands from like leaping out of due diligence hopefully there's not too many people immediately around nah I mean Two Boots is currently in melee with uh, with Ghost Charming, but this we can have you be like on the same side as Two Boots, so you don't hit him with it. Okay, we will we'll we'll, we'll, we'll bullshit that we don't kill Two Boots. We'll bullshit. <laughs> there we no, go. No, no. <laughs> if, if hit him if you want, I don't mind. Do positioned uh, himself so that uh, when Suti had her uh, was up, would be able to uh, do what she needed to do without hurting Two Boots, recognizing that Two Boots is um, becoming a hairless cat. <laughs> <laughs> Until healed. Is it Sphinx cats? Yes. <laughs> oh no! It's becoming a Sphinx cat. <laughs> okay, well, so it is a. Deck save, I believe, right? Are we doing Thunder Wave? Constitution saving Constitution, throw for the Thunder it. Wave. 
Constitution. I'll get it right one day. So that's she's not going to do it. This time. <laughs> she has, yeah. Um, that save ain't going to do it, so he will take full damage. All right, 28. That would, didn't go as well as eight, eight damage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he's also pushed 10 feet away. Okay, so he's pushed back. You get the feeling that maybe it might be one or two more after the one or two more hits to finish him off after that. Um, <laughs> nonetheless, damage is damage. All is good. Uh, two boots, you are up. I'm just charging after him saying, no one calls me kitty cat. Just All right, him out. get him. Uh, so the first one will be an 11 to hit. Nope. The second one will be a 21 to hit. Yep. Dealing a total of 10 points of piercing damage. Okay, you get the feeling it's one or two more hits after the one or two more hits before he's done. <laughs> um, but up next, it is his turn, and he is going to whirl around at you two boots. Um, and he said, um, you know, for a cat, you don't have much claws. <laughs> and he's going to hit you again, or try mm -hmm. to. Um, with a 13, uh, which I imagine is no, yep, and misses. a 19. That one does hit. Okay, so you will take... Uh, you take 9 slashing damage, mm -hmm. and 4 thunder damage. On, and that is enough to put me to negative 3. I am down. So, two boots hits the deck as a uh, charming <laughs> last to himself um however because his hp is so low he is too busy gloating over the body of two boots he doesn't notice alex coming up behind him and you see as alex like a cat he goes down on his hunches and his butt wiggles before he pounces and pins ghost charming on the ground and looks up at you and says Hey, Mom, what do I do with them? That's a good question, my son. What would you like to do? Well, you said we should eat him, right? We were going to kill him? Okay. And it is a, a gruesome scene. You've never seen a ghost being eaten before, but like you can feel the tethering from the astral plane being separated as Alex goes to town on this. It's like watching a cat eat like a small rodent. He's kind of picking it apart and just shoving his face in it. Um, and charming, uh, like his last moments is like a very dramatic like grasping at the air it's like no tell her that i had another girlfriend <clears throat> as he's gone and as charming's final words ring out in this empty room people around you begin to wake up and captain colt says um Why do I get the distinct impression that somebody rode me? Uh, and that's Charming creamed himself. <laughs> and that is that's where we will mean. end our session tonight. Dude <laughs> oh. would have gone straight to Two Boots, pulled out the thing of ointment that he knows that Two Boots had, and would have healed Two Boots. So. Yes, that, would have healed. Uh, and that would have used the very last use of it as well. <laughs> We we're well, going to let Two Boots sacrifice himself. Well, that happened. I don't know what that was, but that was an episode of Once Upon a Time. So thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in for us with us this week. Uh, we loved having you here. Um, you'll be able to catch us on YouTube in a short while. So if you've come in halfway through or anything like that, you can always catch up later on the Encounter Roleplay YouTube. And if you're new, please do hit that follow. Um, I promise I'm only here twice a week, so you don't get this non this bullshit all the time. <laughs> there are There is other great content 
here too. So make sure you hit a follow. Um, but before we do say goodnight, uh, let's go around one more time to everybody and we'll find out uh, if you enjoyed yourselves and where we can find you on the World Wide Web. So, Eldritch Warlock, did you have fun tonight and where can we find you on the internet? Well, to sum it up, let's just say my cheeks hurt from laughing. So I think it's safe to say that I've absolutely adored this episode and I am so, so glad to be in invited back on this was well worth it definitely uh, and i can be found on twitter as eldritch warlock uh, admittedly i'm not really that active on twitter but i do tend to post or uh, repost things of when i'm going to be online on twitch so if anyone wants to see me again somewhere else just keep an eye on my twitter and something will pop up eventually Sweet. Well, thank you very much for joining us again. It was great seeing two boots once more. And uh, I'm sorry I nearly killed him. Oh, don't, um, if you had killed him, I would have loved it. <laughs> so don't worry about that at all. Oh, but um, going back to my wonderful regular cast, Bree, did you have fun tonight? And where can we find you on the internet? I feel like I'm on a list somewhere. <laughs> after this game. I don't know what kind of list, but I'm on one. I've been added to a list after this. Um, mm -hmm. No, it was an absolute blast, guys. I hurt in so many laugh zones. Like, my jaw hurts, my cheeks hurt, my abs hurt. I didn't even know I had those for a while, so very good. Um, <laughs> shout out to what... Uh, I'm bad at pronunciations, but Drage Enzeru, uh, the person who donated Alex, my sweet son, um... I'm going to turn him into the truly evil good boy that we will love forever. I'm collecting now uh, Malin's Menagerie, um, so it was a total blast. But uh, I'm NPC Bree, you can find me on Twitter, that's where I spend most of my time. Um, I play on this channel, I play on Silver RPG, I play on Socraticus Academy, um, I play on Pro Restarters channel. Um, this weekend, um, we're doing a charity 24 hour stream to pay for some medical bills going on in my life on Socraticus Academy. So if you want to come and hang out and watch uh, Scrat eat, uh, what are those, those, what is it, oh, being boozled? He's... Oh no, he's doing that? Yeah, the oh, being boozled. Of course you have those, of course you do. The Why wouldn't you? Oh yeah, I'll be joining Scrat in doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's me. <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us again, Bree. It is always a delight to have Meline in the party. Uh, Madam Gandalf, uh, did you have fun tonight? Right now, the true gal Alex, the OG Alex, did you have fun tonight? And where can we find you on the internet? <laughs> As always, had a lot of fun. I think this one was probably the one where I pulled out the most props. Um, so props to the props, props to the props, but, um, yeah, I, I had an absolute blast. I love doing this ridiculous world of ridiculous activities in this fantasy Shrek meets Brooklyn Nine-Nine beautiful love child. It's, I, I, I'm enjoying it so much, but yeah, my man, my name is Madame Gandalf. You can catch me. Uh, six days a week on Twitch, either on my stream, doing a variety of things from like D&D, cooking, singing, face painting, or a variety of games, um, as well as, yes, this weekend on Scratchkiss Academy to help raise some money for the lovely Brie. I will be there as well uh, with a few friends and... Also, uh, next week on Almighty Tales, where I will be dungeon mastering for the first time, uh, not one shot. <laughs> no panic, no panic. There's no panic. <laughs> look. Thank you. All right. And Cleric of Cod, Cat, did you have fun tonight? And where can we find you on the internet? I had a blast. I'm so glad I got the waterproof mascara um, because I was crying. I was laughing so hard. I was crying. Wow. That was PTSD D&D. &D. That's, that's what that was. <laughs> oh, it doesn't get any better than this. It really doesn't. Um, it was so much fun. Um, I'm 
cat. I'm at Cleric of Court. Uh, you can find me all over the uh, Twitches and on Twitters and uh, as at Cleric of Court. Um, I've got a pinned tweet on the top of my page. Tells you where I'm at. Uh, just last night, actually, I started a um, a new mini campaign over on at Other Dogs Channel. We're doing a as he puts it, a shameless ripoff of Lady Blackbird with Robot Hamlet versus Robot Richard III. So essentially, it's a bunch of Shakespeare nerds and Star Wars nerds having a lot of fun. If that sounds like your thing, come come check us out on Wednesdays um, at 8 p.m. Eastern on at Other Docs channel this month. Um, I get to play a professional shrew, which is so on brand, it's not even funny. Uh, thank you, everybody in chat who comes out and watches, who donates. Um, love y'all. Uh, go watch this weekend over on Scraticus channel. Do the thing. Thank you very much, Kat. Um, <clears throat> ooh, as for me, always, always, always a delight to DM for these wonderful people and our lovely guests every week. Um, I never quite know where we're going to go with our stories, but it is always, always, always a fun time. Um, I can't, I don't think I'm going to be able to look at cream for a while though. That might have put me off cream for a little bit. Um, but as for me, my name is Susie, otherwise known as Susanna Grace. I am a variety streamer who streams video games, tabletop RPGs, and art streams. You can find me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on my own channel, which is at Susanna Grace, which is down there. It's Susanna with one N. Um, I, Thursday, Fridays, find me here. And on uh, Sundays, you can find me on WebDM. Uh, like Kat, I have a pinned tweet that tells you exactly where I am, what I'm doing, and what system I'm playing on any given day. So check that out. Um, but that is us for tonight. Uh, thank you all once again so much for tuning in. And remember, folks, try not to roll too many nat ones because we want to be there laughing when you do. I fuck that up every time. Night. Bye. <laughs> Night, and a special shout out to Air Hideous who couldn't be here but clips us. Love you.